Um, would anybody like to sort of pledge their allegiance? Yes. Yes. Brad, here, lead us. Mm -hmm. I'll you chair with, uh, with uh, Jerry Martin and uh, I'd just uh, like to thank for everybody to come over here and uh, sort of present your project and sort of look at, uh, at your project. Uh, um, right now we're going to do a, a roll call. Um, Jerry? Yes. Uh, John Henry? Here. Maria Schwarzer? She's not here. And, uh, Howard? Here. Um, Penny Meyer, she's not here. Is there anybody else? That's it. That's okay, so we got four people in our quorum. And uh, and third item we're going to have right now is comments on the chair, of the chair. And uh, I'm, I'm speaking right now because uh, um, ever since I became a, a Plum Community Chair is that uh, is one of my responsibility is to to represent the community, uh, the stakeholders, but also also the applicants who are bringing into our neighborhoods because I, I do think that we need to have some sort of uh, openness and transparency to let everybody know what's going on so nobody doesn't become overly concerned without actually knowing what's going on. But um, uh, this uh, last general meeting, when we brought a project in in our general meeting, there was some comments that sort of sort of caused me to concern because some of the comments were made as as sort of uh, not looking at the project itse itself. Because uh, one of the things that that sort of uh, brings to everybody's attention is about bonus density, about uh, growth in, in neighborhoods. And, and I think that, that sometimes when, when you hear that, that name, it, it sort of bring, it kind of brings a red flag in some ways. And, and I think you can't judge on a project by its book, by its cover, but you have to look at the contents and what it offers and what it offers to the community. And that, therefore, I think you need to peel the layers and understand what it what it's all meant and what what advantage does it has toward the community and uh, as as being a, a plum community chair I think that you know I, I do I do have concerns about you know having uh, our our board members sort of commenting on something that they don't really know about you know didn't take the time to look at your Look at the drawings. Look at the, the plans, and look at the overall you know uh, scope of the project, and and maybe I need to address that in a general meeting just to let people know that you know not all projects is, is not going to have an adverse effect. It might it might improve it, but any 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 time when there's something like that, it I think we're always sort of you know, kind of prepare what's, what, what other people might say. So I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, just to let everybody know that, um, that I, I do represent our community, but also represent the people who come here. 
because I do communicate, I do communicate with Eric and I do communicate with uh, Peggy to, to let them know that I'm always open, I'm always in, in, in communication because I, I do represent you <coughs> too and I, I do want to be diplomatic as a, as a Plum Committee Chair as far as, far as reaching out and, and being good partners. So I appreciate that everybody is able to hear what I have to say. So, um, is there anybody who has a public comment uh, right now before we go into new business? Okay, that was easy. <laughs> oh, and just to take note, uh, Maria Switzer is uh, uh, present right now. She's one of our board members. So thank you for coming. Um, okay, new business. Uh, right now, uh, we're having an ad hoc community beautificate, beautification committee. And what we're doing is, is that we're, we're reaching out in different organizations to kind of create some attention, sort of uh, beautify the, the Van Nuys neighborhood by uh, one of the projects that LADT has been uh, been uh, uh, advertising and, and encouraging neighborhood councils doing these people plazas, which is converting uh, um, unused uh, roads or or used park parking stalls and um, anything that's on the street and convert them into bike corrals uh, to parklets, which uh, is taking just one parking space and creating like some sort of um, like a lounge or anything where people could could be activated in the area as far as pedestrian oriented. And then there's a plaza which uh, sort of closes down the road. And one example is the is the uh, Sunset Triangle Plaza in Silver Lake, which uh, has been so successful and, and it brings people together and it, and it sort of uh, be becomes another element because I know that it's been so successful that they're trying to, to make it more permanent so that's and and they're doing it all around so um, I know we have somebody from the um, from Valley Bikery Jennifer mm -hmm. who uh, I, I met with her yesterday and and I would like to like her, her group to be involved with this because I think we, we do need bike corrals in the area and, and sort of uh, try to activate where we could have more bicyclists and more pedestrians if we don't have enough pedestrians on the street in Van Nuys, which I think we do have. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll make it brief because right now um, there is a orientation for application and I know that um, uh, this lady right here, Ronnie, uh, who is gracious enough to show up, uh, is, is able to uh, to add, you know, to volunteer and, and see what you could do as far as, you know, creating this people space. And I, and I also like to introduce uh, Adam Hurwitz. Uh, he's a, he's a blog writer for the Van Nuys neighborhood. Andrew. Andrew, and sorry. <laughs> um, that I, yeah, who writes a rod and. Van Nuys and other than Van Nuys, so uh, I welcome him, and he's always interested in trying to improve our neighborhood. So, with that, um, is there is there anybody in our members who want to bring something into the beautification committee that they would like to see? Okay, John Henry. <clears throat> I had one. Uh, we were talking. A city can have many types of murals, and I simply was very intrigued when I ran across a textbook that actually has a mural of Van Nuys in it presented. <laughs> These are interesting, funky old houses along Kittredge in Van Nuys. And I was thinking, somewhere we could use one historical mural. One site might be the south wall of the Chase Bank building. Someday, who knows, that might be a place where we'll have one of those city plazas. If they do move Fire Station 39, what will happen on Sylvan Street may be very different. We may even have something more like a mall or something like a much more reduced traffic street. This is just one idea. I'm not trying to preclude the idea of 
more artistic malls or malls that more ethnic people would like to do. I just think one mall, kind of based on a funky old view of old Van Nuys in the center of Van Nuys, where the original land sale was, has a lot of value. Okay. And I'll volunteer to work on the ad hoc committee with Mr. Carino. Um, John Henry, may I sure. add something? Um, that, that looks somewhat like um, the yearbooks and the art that used to be from all the other yearbooks of the various high schools around here. And I'm sure that there's probably a lot more than just that that we could probably find and add to it. There may be. This so actually, though, I have walked through that neighborhood. This looks very close to two specific houses I can think of. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and again, condition. if you could get a buy-in from the people who have the houses, and they would love to say that their house was on the mural or something like that. Mm -hmm. That could be a lot of fun. Yeah, but somewhat like what's uh, in North Hollywood in the wash there, that continuing mural that goes all the way down uh, along Colwood. And if I may, I'd like to ask something about what the bikery does. Um, speak out for you if I can, and you can correct me because I, I'm a novice at this, but I know that you were part of the program that gives out free lights to bicyclers, aren't you? Um, actually, that's the LA County um, Bike Coalition, but we are but you a part of that. You yeah. facilitated in this area, so right. I just would like to commend you on that. Yeah, I don't know if everybody knows what the bikery is. is, is yeah, can you can you explain to them? Sure. So again, my name is Jennifer, and um, I'm here um, to show support for the People Street application. Um, the bikery, which is just around the corner on Victory. Um, basically on um, Victory and Van Nuys, is a co-op where you come in and you learn how to um, fix your bike yourself. So um, I myself have been car free going on three years and um, I've always had a car all my life and as soon as I turned 16 I got a car. So around three years ago I was really inspired and I decided to try and um, to, to give it up, one less car. And so um, I came across the bikery uh, maybe a year ago, and um, I know that um, especially being a, a female, when my uh, bike you know breaks down or something like that, um, to take it in somewhere and have it professionally fixed, just like your car, um, it, it can be expensive. So um, I found out about the bikery and there's a lot of other co-ops in the area, um, in the Los Angeles County area, um, where they will teach you how to do it yourself and for a very minimum cost. Um, and they also, um, how I got really involved with the bikery is on Wednesday nights they have a program called Yo Cycle where we um, meet at the bikery and then we ride our bikes to um, Balboa Park and we do yoga, and then we ride back, and then usually afterwards we go out for like tacos or food or something like that. So, um, so I, I went to my first uh, planning meeting for the bikery last night, where you were there, and you presented this application, and I'm very pro anything that um, promotes the use of bikes. Even here at the police station, they don't have a bike uh, a bike rack, so uh, but I feel very safe. I parked it right in front and I locked it up, so I feel like no. I hope no one's gonna steal from the police station. <laughs> but anyways, um, so that's the bikery. Um, Ayla Stern, she is um, one of the main um, leaders of the bikery, and she should be here this evening. Um, she has all the information. But the uh, program that you're speaking of is um, Operation Firefly which is the Los Angeles um, Bike Coalition, but Los Angeles County Bike Coalition program, where they will stop people um, and say, hey, you don't have any lights, and you know, biker safety is very important, so they'll, they'll actually give them lights. So, um, and uh, I don't know what else to say, but that's the bikery, and I'm here to um, support any way I can to um, make Van Nuys a more beautiful place. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, mm -hmm. and thank you, Ronnie. Um, John, um, do you want to, uh, do you want to lead this? Lead your, your mural idea? Uh, yes, I'll work with you. Well, okay, yes. I'll, I'll support you. Yeah. First we have to establish who owns the building that the mm -hmm. Chase, build, the Chase Bank is in. That's true. I, I don't disagree. And, and, I and, just... and then from there, 
ask permission uh, if we can put a mural on the side yeah. of it. And plus, uh, who's going to be the artist and who's Absolutely. gonna who's gonna um, who's gonna pay for it? Yeah, I don't disagree. I just was trying to uh, tie up two quick ideas, and since I had the great visual prop here, I just couldn't leave the prop at home. I might lose it again. <laughs> well, thank you, John. So, um, is there anything about the ad hoc community beautification? <coughs> well, from there, from where you're at right now, we have to establish what, what areas are open, mm -hmm. what are vacant, what are derelict, what can be used, what can't be used, what's public land, what's private property, mm -hmm. and, uh, and identify those, those uh, lots. And, yeah, uh, they're, what you're talking about, it's not necessary lots, but they're actually on the street. So it, it's, you're dealing with L LADOT. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's sponsored by the LADOT. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's, it's a little bit complicated because uh, these are pilot programs. These are temporary structures that, you know, hopefully in the future that they'll make it more permanent, you know, if they, if they deemed it as, as successful. As they as they uh, see it. Are you looking for something around this government center? Um, or or we we talked about it uh, uh, at last night at the bikery. Um, there could be in front of uh, Tres Hermanos. There could be right by by, by uh, um, near the corner of Victory and Van Nuys, uh, right right next to the Peruvian restaurant. You know and. Uh, I think the hip hop shop. There's a hip. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm kind of confused though. Um, it's on the street. Literally, yeah, it takes in the up a parking right spot. Yeah. It, in if the right it, of way. Yeah. With parking at such a premium mm -hmm. in this this small area of the government center, I mean, there's no parking in front of my house. I live three blocks away from here. Mm -hmm. Day in, day out, there's somebody parked in front of my house that's here attending either court or, or business license, whatever it happens to be, making themselves available of, of the services here. Yeah. I don't know where you're going to find uh, non-occupied space that, uh, that the city is willing to give up. Um, um, this is a city project, and they are willing to give it up. They found space on Sunset Boulevard, and I mean, it's huge. Oh, I know it. And an Atwater, yeah. and, you know. and they do it in downtown. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, just par stop. parking is pretty much a premium if anybody who had to pay uh, parking in, in some of the parking lots near uh, near the courthouse. So I know it sounds like a little bit uh, crazy, I guess, especially since Los Angeles is such a really strong car culture, but I believe personally that this is kind of like the direction that things are going, <clears throat> gas prices getting so high, and you know every the economy. I really believe that bikes are going to be more. I mean, they're prevalent in other countries, so um, I I believe that this is a project that the future. It's kind of like we're moving in this in this direction, and um, I believe that there is somewhere that we could find that would be out of the way yet at the same time convenient for people. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a bike corral, it could be a plaza, or it could be a, a parklet. So it's it's just one parking space. So, I don't know. I know it's a little controversy, but that's my, I'm just stating my opinion. Yeah, it's, it, it is a little bit different, unconventional, but I think uh, the reason why this is happening is because we're going through a transformation where the city is evolving. And, and the thing is, is that, in the younger generations are not going to have to own a car because it's going to be more expensive to maintain it, to own it, to to have to have parking space because I, I think it's more uh, a, more of a deterrent than a convenience because I mean I mean I grew up in the 80s and 70s and and back then it was much easier to drive from here to uh, Santa Monica but not anymore. You know, things change, things evolve, and people are living in 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 uh, smaller places, and be, and cities are becoming compartmentalized in in some ways, where our spaces are are starting is starting to get narrow, and and we have to look at you know 
about placement, about program, and, and what it does to, for the community. And, and that little thing about these park, parklets and park sort of activates uh, pedestrian, pedestrian activity. And that's, I think that's what the, the motive is in, in, in these type of uh, pilot programs. And I, I think uh, being in, in the valley, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard, but um, when, you, when you see traffic, you know, constantly as a, as a recurring, you know, thing, it's, you're, you're starting to, to live a different life. Just to say, um, yes. Hi, Brad Rosenheim. Um, isn't where where Sylvan narrows down in front of the county? Isn't there a little island there that could be sort of a benign area? Because I don't think it's parking. It's where the, the uh, road transitions to single lane, right, uh, right past the city hall building at the in front of if the If you're Sylvan's going this way, right? <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and if you go uh, to Van Nuys and you go across the street, there's a a uh, um, uh, Indian side, restaurant? No, on this side, when, when you pass the city hall building, there's a uh, Somar Street. <clears throat> and then there's the county, I think, child care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, the, the street narrows there so that you get the angle parking. Mm -hmm. And there's a little area that's like an island that could be used. It'd be benign to the extent that you wouldn't necessarily remove parking. Yeah. And it could be a demonstration in the community how the how they work. Um, uh -huh. So that may be a, I, That could be a possibility. Um, I always just say we also want to have more exposure, you know, so I uh, always thought that Van Nuys would have greater exposure to say more into like governmental. I mean, it's, I mean, it's always a possibility to put in that area, but I, I, I like your, I like this suggestion. So, um, yes, John? Oh, just very quickly. I hope also in looking at some of these ideas you might look for a counter strategy. I know my counter strategy is I go from Van Nuys to North Hollywood and I take the back streets at 5 o'clock. I don't want to take the big streets. And I'm always curious why there isn't more of an attempt to put bike lanes down connecting back streets that would actually work. And putting white paint on Van Nuys Boulevard and telling bicycles they can go in it is an invitation. But it's not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, It'd be just as good to tell to give them planned alternatives to say mm -hmm. this is a good way to go to Valley College from here, for yeah. instance. That they may not have thought about. They may not have gotten off the main streets and figured out that yes, this is a good way to go to Valley College on the back streets. For bicyclists, it would be a great idea. Well, you can also ride on the orange line and get to Valley College. Too. Other places too at Van Nuys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Can we move? Move forward. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, second item in our agenda is uh, 5700, 5720 Sepulveda Boulevard, and 5703 and 5707 Halbrand. I think we're going to move this and face it uh, so that everybody can see it. Is, is this okay? If I, if I can sort of um, angle this one? Is or? anybody. Uh, I mean, if anybody wants to get closer to the. Come on down. Let's see these. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Karina, thank you for uh, being so communicated with, with me, too, and including us on the agenda uh, tonight. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Eric Lieberman, I'm a land use advisor. Uh, in this case, for Sepulveda Square LLC, Bruce Arefi, uh, builder partner uh, Gary Chappell's here, and architect Alan Boyd, in case we need some uh, of Alan's input on, uh, mm -hmm. on the architectural design. Um, just to kind of get sort of, uh, I guess, familiar with the, the area or the location that we're talking about, uh, this is a property, I don't know if you can see this, it's bordered in blue here. It's uh, Sepulveda Boulevard, south of Hatteras, north of Burbank. Uh, it's this border here, uh, this border here. It's 200 feet of frontage on Sepulveda and 200 feet of frontage on Halbrent. Um, this property was entitled uh, through a general plan amendment zone change in March of 2010. The City Planning Commission approved a project here. It was for a 97 unit multifamily uh, 
development with about 90, 100 square feet of retail commercial on the ground floor. Um, since that time, it has not been developed, obviously. It's still there. This is a collectively 49 units. I think there's roughly uh, 30 some odd units in this larger building, and the balance of it, you know, uh, on the rest of these buildings, there's one vacant area um, in the northeast corner. Uh, so, the uh, so what Bruce would like to do now is go ahead and move forward with developing this property, uh, and in doing so, felt that it would be appropriate to, appropriate to update the architecture and to update the design of the building. Um, the previous design of this building was more of a Spanish Mediterranean motif. Um, this is a more contemporary, it's more um, up to date in terms of what uh, they feel the market is desirable for. Uh, the, uh, the update of this uh, building is fully within the, the massing, the scale, the height, the step backs, the setbacks of the previous entitlement. And I'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Um, this is the perspective from Sepulveda. Um, the uh, height on Sepulveda previously approved was 63 feet. It's currently still 63 feet. Uh, there is a retail component as there was in the previous project. Uh, it's just it's a little bit more accentuated with this type of architecture, uh, which is something that is consistent with what the design guidelines for the community plan as well as the citywide design guidelines want to see um, a sort of an accentuation of the, of the commercial when you have a mixed use project, as well as um, multiple uh, levels of articulation, use of materials, variations in color, that sort of thing. Um, so that's the Sepulveda side. Uh, the Halren side, also same type of um, modern uh, motif and, and architecture. And again, it's important to understand that the design of this uh, is intended to fit within the envelope of what was previously approved back in 2010. Um, specifically, that uh, the if you look at you go back to this area for a second. The property is split in half here with an R3 zone on the east, and this is on RAS4 hmm. as a result of that 2010 action on the west side. So as a result, that approval back then limited the height in the R3 side to 54 and a half feet. So to the top of the building here is no more than 54 and a half. This redesign stays within that building envelope. In addition to that, that approval also required that the building be stepped back so that there wouldn't be just a straight wall along Halbrand, it would soften up that elevation so there's less impact on the single family uh, there to the east. So much of the attention that's going toward uh, uh, Sepulveda, right? You're, you're creating more density and softening up toward Halbrand. Right? right, so what we've done is, there's a couple of things that have also changed on here and I'll, I'll get to um, our application and why we're here tonight. Uh, the other thing that's been done here is on the previous project, there were, uh, there were units that were actually street facing here. Uh, and one of the things that we learned especially, and we made the assumption was important to the community here, was that the access be restricted on Halbrand, particularly for vehicular access, but also with, res with regards to the residents of the building. So we eliminated those units that actually had pedestrian, direct pedestrian access from Halbrand. And we created a building that still has units facing this side. In fact, there's a community space here. And I'll show you the, the landscape plan that shows there's a community space here so that, so that these units and this activity, common activity, still look out onto the street and activate this side of the building. Uh, these, the, this curve face being continuous. So this, there, there's no uh, opportunity for pedestrian or vehicular access on Halbrand. That was sort of the intention here. And at the same time, trying to create something that is less of a back of a building, that has more of uh, the front of the building appearance. Um, the, uh, in doing this application uh, for this building, we applied for a density bonus 
that uh, creates uh, a building that has a capacity of 131 units. Uh, so it's going from 97 to 131. Um, again, within the building envelope and massing from before. So uh, it's not creating additional height or additional, uh, you know, reduced setbacks, things like that. Uh, what we are asking for as an incentive is an increase in the floor area ratio by 10%. So we're actually going from, I think, 150,400 to 160,000. The incentive under density bonus would allow a 35% increase, um, but we only need about 10% to get these units to a size that make them a, a reasonable for a good quality living space. It's a luxury apartment complex, so that gets us to where we need to be within the building envelope that we have to work with. Um, that application for density bonus we filed back in early December. Uh, it's a uh, administrative review, it's a non-public hearing uh, item, uh, but as members of the community we felt that it's important for us to come out and as Karina had mentioned earlier, uh, transparency and keeping the community up to speed on what's going on. There's I'm sure some expectations of when this was project was going to be built and since there's changes we wanted to make sure that the community was aware of what was actually happening so that when we get started, uh, there's no surprises. Uh, and that's, that's why we're here today. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, if there's any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. And um, I don't know if you want to... Uh, I'll, I'll, Andy, okay. first. Yeah, well, my <coughs> question is just in the first illustration that you've shown on there. Um, I've, yeah, that would be the perspective when you're standing in front of Target on Sepulveda looking across the street. That's the, what the Sepulveda elevation would look right. like. Right, so, I mean, right now, there's not, I mean, this is just a fantasy of an architectural drawing, is that correct? Because that's Sepulveda right. with its eight lanes. If we showed Target, then you wouldn't be able to see our building. So well, we'll no, but target. I mean, but yeah. Target would be behind me and I'd be facing towards the building. Mm -hmm. Right, I don't, don't get confused with the purpose of these displays. Okay. The purpose of this display is to not show the building in context. It's right. really just to show off the, the architecture of the building itself. <laughs> right. So that's, you know, yeah, right. this this green belt here does does not exist. And will as, not exist. Uh, no, no I, we don't have control over that side of the road. It's sort of a fantasy. Yeah, yeah. right. And, and, and this nice. is and, and Halbert Street is not this white either. No, and it doesn't have a double yellow line in the middle. It's not six lanes. Yeah, yeah no, fine. That's... we know that. Okay. <laughs> I like the greenery. Can't <laughs> you do that? Good luck with you. Paint the street. Maybe. Can we just tear down tar Target? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, lots of questions. Uh, First of all, how many uh, one, two, and three bedrooms are we talking about? So, yeah, good question. The unit mix, so I got this, this right. Um, there are 25 one bedrooms, 102 two bedrooms, and four three bedrooms. So, all together is 131. Okay, uh, is there any uh, affordable housing involved? Right, so the density bonus program requires that you include 11% um, in this case of your base density. So the base density in this case is driven by our Q condition, which is 97 units. So 11%, you round up. We have to provide so 11 good. units for very low income. Okay. Does, uh, does a low income require to have parking? Um, well, the providing. whole building is part oh, you're per, providing? yeah, the whole okay. building is part per that part of the uh -huh. code, but which if, requires. But if, if the unit was uh, affordable, you you're right a, in your uh, interpretation of SB 18. We just haven't chosen to underpark it. Right. Okay. Okay. You know, we, we feel that the in order to provide a, a good unit, you need to provide a parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's That's important too to understand. Uh, and, so. and it's it's sort of uh, with zoning, it, it, it's a requirement, right? No. no, not with SB 18. We could take a reduction. There's right. a couple of right. ways you can do it. Um, there's two options with SB 1818. You can park your car, you can park your units at one space per one bedroom, or two spaces for two bedroom or, and three bedroom. Mm -hmm. Or you can park code parking throughout, which is another aspect of code, and then reduce your parking to one space per unit for affordable. We've elected to go the other way because okay. there's more parking available for each of the units. So it's one and a half and two? 
Yeah. It's, 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 one, one, it's one for one bedrooms and two parking spaces for two bedrooms. Okay. And three. And the three and bedrooms. Three. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. any, uh, uh, guest, any guest parking area? There's no dedicated to guest parking. There are, there are three, I think, additional parking spaces that we've put in there. Um, there could also potentially be available parking that would be freed up in the evenings from the commercial. Mm -hmm. So that's a potential, but there's no designated guest gotcha. parking. What's the street parking? <laughs> well, I mean, there's some Paul Boulevard. Is that a good lot street? Do they, can you not park on it on certain times? Yep. No, I think there is there is restricted parking out in front. No, restricted by hour. I think two hour parking. Uh, during and uh, I'm looking at the parking plan, and I noticed that uh, that there's a gate within inside the. Um, yeah. And I guess there, you know, instead of like there's a gate in front, it, you're going inside the building itself. And in this area, is this more the commercial parking? Correct. So as you enter the building. Through the garage, um, you come to the commercial uh, designated parking first, and at the end of the aisle, there's a gate uh, that would keep you from going into that rest of the parking unless you're a resident. And those extra stalls that he talked about are in the commercial loop, so they're, they're outside. Outside. Okay. okay. So it could be either be guest parking, uh, yeah, sort of the absolutely. option. So it, it has flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's just the nature of how it will be. You know, uh -huh. I think that people will park there. How many commercial spaces? Well, it's a total of 8,600 square feet. So we re reduced it slightly. 32 commercial aside, and then there's the extra three stall. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in and, and looking at the, the commercial, is that, um, that could be easily subdivided, right? Of course. As, yeah. as different, different. Uh, yeah, um, as tenant improvements, depending upon what sort of uses go in there. Uh, and the, those types of uses will be driven by the parking, obviously. Mm -hmm. you know. So, um, what is what is the sort of projected or sort of the the ideal tenant to come in there and you know? Um, well, we've had lots of ideas thrown out. So we <laughs> threw up Starbucks or something like that. But like a little restaurant or, maybe or a little restaurant. Nice. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it could be uh, could be a restaurant, but again, it's going to be driven park. by the availability. Of yeah, the and yeah. the market. Yeah. Yeah. Um, John. Uh, okay. um, my name is Jonathan Brand. I'm a council of the bonds office. Just so you know, the um, re retail parking, the ratios are different based on the type of use. Yeah, we know. So okay, yeah. well, I let you know that, but maybe the community. Doesn't. No, we know. Um, so restaurants have ten per thousand, ten per thousand. So that's the highest and most intense. And then you have medical office, which is less. I think it's like three per. And then you have or four or five per. And then you have some retails four, and then some is some is two. Correct. So it depends what kind of mix they want in there. So if you're looking at full restaurants all the way, it's it doesn't support it. No, it support it. Support it. it doesn't I support it. Doesn't support an 8,600 square foot restaurant. No. Right. Right. So what what about common retail? I mean, just regular retail. Four fifty. Four per. Yeah. 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 Four per thousand. So also notice that the retail is divided into five, you know, conceivably five storefront yep. entrances. Uh, you know, two pairs. The material the material for the two pair on either side is a striated uh, limestone. So it's, a, it's an upscale material, not just stuck on it. So You're talking about the finish? The yes. Yeah. material, yeah. Uh -huh. So it, it's different from the stucco <coughs> that's, right. that's surrounding it. Right. So it, it, it accentuates that area right there. Yeah, it's a little more... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's a, a different element, a different upscale, material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much uh, outreach have you done uh, to the uh, surrounding community, especially those people? On the uh, on the back side of the building, we met with the Noble uh, Estates Homeowners Group last Thursday. Um, we're actually here. We're here. Okay. Yeah, two of us. We're, yeah, yeah. With the Noble. Community. How was it received? It was very well received. I think yeah, that we had a really on a, on a whole. I think that the neighbors are very excited about the Sepulveda area, that whole quadrant getting cleaned up, getting you know uh, a change of use. Um, what we're most concerned about Park, is uh, cars. Vehicular traffic. Well, that was my second question. Yeah. Traffic control. Yeah. What, what kind of studies have you done as far as uh, 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 environmental impact and, and, uh, and traffic flow itself? Well, there was a traffic study done uh, for the 2010 project. 
Uh, that traffic study was resubmitted to DOT for this. They re-looked at it. Uh, they didn't add any additional mitigations. They felt that the incremental difference of the 34 units wouldn't change the, uh, the impact that was already assessed on the 97 unit. Um, so we're going with that. So the environmental review that was done is being reconsidered <coughs> uh, to include DOT's comments. Uh, and the conditions of approval for that environmental is what we will have to comply with. Okay, there, there's obviously two <laughs> mitigating situations. Uh, a, that there's a new bus line that'll be going uh, down uh, Sepulveda that'll go into Westwood, I believe. And then the second thing is that they, they are proposing uh, 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 either a light rail uh, system going down either Van Nuys Boulevard or Sepulveda. It hasn't been decided yet. Um. That's what I mean. Do I have to say about that? That still is, that still is uh, still out. I haven't heard back from the folks. But that they, they pretty much determined the route as far as uh, the Van Nuys. Mm, they still haven't yet. What they are proposing for June is just a short term uh, fix mm -hmm. in terms of what they, what, they can, what they have funding for right now. What's, what's being proposed for the light rail or whatever, that's a separate project. Okay. okay. So we won't have, won't have much right now. The won't know much until they decide. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's sort of a waiting game. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And another part of that I'm going to add, to the, along with your concern about traffic, is that we are required now, under the new code, to add one bicycle stall inside the building for uh, every unit. So we've got 131 plus another 10 or so yeah, for the retail. Yeah. One. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're allowed to take a reduction in parking because of that, but we're not taking that reduction. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's 131 bicycle parking spaces plus um, what's required. 13 for outside. For the commercial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I did look at the, uh, it's supposed to be uh, between the openings, uh, sort of mm -hmm. a temporary uh, bicycle. Well, they call it short term. Short term, okay. Bike that's parking. what they call it, short term. Short term. <laughs> and then the long term bike parking is located uh, in the interior of the building. Okay. Uh, in a, in a uh -huh. And this is uh, for for visitors to to be patrons for the to visitors. use the retail. Correct. Uh huh. And is it going to be something different, or is this sort of a typical? Uh, not really. There, I was just envisioning um, the loop one where you can change your bike to it. Okay. It's a little more sculptural than just a yeah. utilitarian rack. It looks it looks good if it's not. Cluttered with bicycles and with bicycles. Yeah, and so it'd be things. sort of integrated to the to the building itself too. Well, no, it's just going to freestand out in front of it, but yeah. Okay. Okay. John. Uh, John. Oh, I just would add, I don't have the traffic surveys, but from my own eyeball experience living along Hatteras, mm -hmm. and from my experiences in going to Target, I hate to say, it, I think I would simply avoid the stores in this location. Any time from five o'clock to eight o'clock, and wow. uh, just because I the traffic at Hatter, uh, traffic at Burbank and Sepulveda is mm. is so awful. That's a personal comment, but mm. I see I can't imagine the traffic steady suggesting that there isn't a lot of gridlock. In Burbank and Sepulveda. But we could walk. We take your bicycle. <laughs> yeah, and, and this, is, this is three right. blocks south, so yeah. And it is a concern. Uh, one of the things that we would consider in the, the retail um, tenants that we select are people to be compatible with the units in the building. You know that we expect that a, a, they're going to be attracted by 131 units, like a you know a Jamba Juice sort of thing, um, where people that are in the building want to go down and take advantage of that. The Starbucks. And the retails themselves know that there's 131 people just in that building that will take advantage of what they have to offer. Well, I'm kind of looking at like some of these uh, um, the storefronts, sort of like what's going on on Kester and Burbank. Kester, yeah. oh, where the, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah the little, little small area. Yeah, but and, it's less congested. Yeah, than it's not the like, Yeah, because I mean, one of the biggest things is sort of that quandary is that you're in the corner of Burbank and Sepulveda, where um, Sepulveda is sort of an alternative to the 405. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. and it also separates uh, um, from the from Sepulveda Basin. So mm -hmm. your your the condition, the geography is sort of a, an awkwardness because it also um, 
doesn't really invite much pedestrian because that area right. is sort of, uh, you know, as a, as a stop right. in some ways. It's a speedway to the freeway. Well, yeah. there's, there's a gas station and a car. Oh, we get pedestrians. Place, you know, there yeah, the and there's a, there's a restaurant that's, <laughs> that's right Zanka. next to. Oh, he loves Zanka. Yeah, but there's one right next behind the, uh, the, the um, Chevron. There's that school. Oh, yeah, that little coffee shop. Yeah, coffee yeah, shop. That's a little place. Well, there's a Denny's across the street, too. And there's that, yeah. But that's on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I think the main concern of uh, at our meeting as far everyone loves the idea. I mean, we love the design. We all think it's great. I think the main concern is when the, uh, when the residents need to go out in the morning mm -hmm. to turn left. There's no way to turn left. To get onto the freeway or south. Yeah, what we don't know so what they DOT have to go is going right, to tell you. Maybe right. go through. I know John lives in our in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, to go through the neighborhood, we're just worried that it's just going to. They're going to turn from north on Sepulveda con and right on Hatteras, right. and either go down Noble or to avoid the speed bumps on Noble, <laughs> they'll hit Burbet, Burnett or Columbus or Halbrin mm -hmm. and zip down Martha to get. Yes, we just can but see. Would they go up to Victory then? Oh, for no. heaven's sake! If they're trying to get to the south, oh, south. Right. there's no reason yeah. that they're going to go it, all the no. way up if to you're Oxnard late, or yeah. Victory. They will cut through the uh, neighborhood. Jonathan, yeah. yeah. Has um, couple questions. Has your trap? Has a traffic study required you to do any sort of like improvements? Like traffic like, control, that type of thing? Like a stop sign, a right turn pocket, a signal, yeah. something like that. That's one question. My second one, what was the, what were the amount of parking spaces for the residential in the before project and now the after project? Okay, so the, the study, the traffic study from before didn't require any um, traffic control devices stop signs or stop lights or turn pockets um, and when they studied the intersections they identified that they are impacted but they also identified that the project wasn't going to incrementally increase that impact to a point where it needed to have those kinds of uh, to mitigate its own impacts that would have been in 2008 or 2009 it would have been in 2000 yeah 2009 probably hmm. so uh, and that was resubmitted um, the, the ratio in parking for uh, the previous project, um, well, we're currently proposing a total, including the commercial, of 274 uh, parking spaces, and I think that the 259 total parking spaces is what was required before. So there's, the ratio is slightly less. Um, we have a little less commercial a little bit more residential, um, but generally it's it's close. It's a little, we're providing a little less in ratio, but we're providing what the requirement was for a minimum of 259, we're providing 274. I'm not looking for you to shoot yourself in the foot, but what, what impediments have you seen uh, as far as whether it's uh, Labanja's office or, or city planning or, I mean, Who's not for this project? Well, so far, nobody has expressed any opposition to the project. So far, what I've heard, there's a lot of community concerns on community-based issues. Um, these traffic control issues, I think, exist today. Um, that's probably the number one issue for the community, is you know how can we deter those kinds of turns going in and making Martha Street a raceway to get to Burbank so they can get on the freeway. Uh, we talked about speed bumps, we talked about you know, no, no left turn signs or no right turn signs, you know, whatever we could do, but it really turns more to a community-based issue and not so much the project. The project, I think, itself has been pretty well received. Yeah, it's it's very a great appealing. project. Very appealing. I think it'll give a lot of um, character, a, a character, and just a little yeah. uplift to the neighborhood. I think we need something like that on Sepulveda. Yeah. I yeah. think it's a great thing. Um, I think the back end of it is really lovely too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Andy. Yeah, I have a question. Like right here, as you go into the garage and you exit the garage, is there some way to put a put a concrete uh, construction into the floor of the garage, preventing a car from turning south down Sepulveda? I, I actually would take it a little differently. What we talked about at the meeting last week was to put a right turn only sign that maybe has uh, some, some times, you know, that between, I don't know, 6 and 8 in the morning, 
it, so the bulk of the day they can make a left turn, but During rush at, hour. Certain, at rush hour we limit it to right turn only. I, I think that the concrete curb idea might be more awkward than productive, right. just in, in reality. You know, and the, I just don't see that that kind of sign would be obeyed by most people. They'll be uh, making the illegal lefts to go south on this Sepulveda. I don't it's know not well, really first of all, do we know, know that it's illegal to make a left on to go south on Sepulveda? Because you're turning. Yes, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> I, I, can, I can testify to it. Is there, is there a double count? <laughs> I would want to get in an accident. Sorry about that. Yeah. Seventy-five percent of the people <laughs> follow the rules and are thoughtful. You know. I, yeah, there's always going to be that belligerent person who's not going to follow the rules, but you're going to be sitting there and you're not going to be able to make the left turn anyway, right? Yeah. Well, there's no, just the too traffic, much traffic, traffic and, and, and that's, that's why I got the ticket. Okay. All right. <laughs> Don't worry, I've never turned right on Camarillo Street either off of Kester. Ever. Oh. Ever. <laughs> won't be eating at that Denny's any longer either. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I, I do have a few. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a stickler in just checking all the plans and, sure. and sort of understanding the project itself. I noticed that you have a uh, rec room on the top floor of the, oh, there's the a, sixth uh, floor. There's several amenities. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, there's several amenities. There's a couple of courtyards. Uh, <coughs> the main courtyard here accommodates uh, a pool and um, very generous open space that's open to the sky. Uh, I had mentioned too on the Halbrand side that there's a community space here that looks out onto the street, uh, which is a nice feature that's connected to this, this entire uh, open area. There's also a landscape courtyard towards the Sepulveda side uh, that's also open to the sky. Um, and that's on what floor? Is on? Uh, this is on the de on the parking deck. On the podium, yeah, on the, so the, the second podium. floor. Okay. Right. Mm. Uh, and then there's a, there's a roof deck uh, here, which is actually a fourth floor deck, I think, more than. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's at the fourth. It's floor. at the fourth floor. And then there's also a, a rec room that sits back from the front facade. Yeah. And, um, and, and all So and they're, you, they're sprinkled around evenly around the project. If very you nice. Yeah. This also provides the articulation mm -hmm. on Sepulveda, so there's something that is there, is there also yeah, like yeah. a roof deck on by the rec room lounge? It, it doesn't say roof deck, it just says roof. Oh, okay. You're talking about on, down on the um, front Oh, no, he's, no by I the mean, rec room lounge, that's just the roof. Um, oh, okay, so there's no there's Yeah, no there's a sport. city building code that basically says you can't have a roof deck that goes right up to your parapet. I think they're afraid of people falling over. Fall. So you have to be 10 yeah. feet back. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's a safety issue. Okay. Okay. And I, I noticed on the on some of the north-south elevation, you have some, I guess, grills. I would assume that these are sliding doors or something, or something no. in that nature. Um, just on the side elevation? Side so elevation. They're sliding so doors like, above wrought iron rails. Yeah. So or it would be like a wrought iron rails. So it's just sort of like a sliding door that's Absolutely. a big, so it, you get like cross end ventilation, is mm -hmm. that the intention? Yeah, yeah. yeah but they're, they are set back about five or six feet. Everybody, <laughs> on, everybody on the side has their own private patio or balcony. How large are the patios? It varies. Some of them are, you know, are four foot deep, some of them are six feet deep. Okay, stepped back. Depends on the side and the location okay. and the unit type. Yeah, the, so the sliding doors are inset. Uh, Jonathan? Uh, I'm, re I'm really uh, happy that you're maintaining um, some units on Halbred to activate the street as opposed to just being the back of, of the mm -hmm. parking lot. I mean, I, I can't tell you how important that is yeah. from an urban planning standpoint because, I mean, I go out on the council beautification truck every now and then, and this part of Halbred is like ground zero for like illegal dumping. Mm. Yeah. And several of the existing park, uh, several, several of the exi existing older apartment buildings. The back of the apartment is that that's what it is, it's just the garage. Right. And people are hanging out there. Yeah. I understand the hotels. I mean, you don't want the hotels to front Halbert. But for residential and for people and for people to live and to see what's going on in the street, to have neighbors, I mean, that's so important. So yeah. I'm really glad you kept that in. And then also, you're not adding any extra height from uh, the original project. So that's another positive that I, that I appreciate. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there any further question? Yeah. Uh, Maria? With the 131 units, will there be an on-site manager? And if not, 
Who yes. is your management company and uh, how the maintenance and things like that do you have? We'll be an on-site manager, but Gary, maybe you can answer that more specifically. Yeah, there will be a, uh, a full-time on-site manager. Uh -huh. There will also be you know, additional uh, two or three more people on staff, maintenance people, uh, leasing agents. Uh, we are the um, the property managers, and my office is right around the corner on next to the little cafe that we're talking about on Burbank Boulevard. So, you know, we're very close, and we're very, you know, deeply involved in the management and maintenance of the property. Okay, good. And my second question is, uh, the height is 63 feet on the front on Sepulveda. How does that compare with Target? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not certain. Um, it's probably comparable, or Target may even be a little taller. Than that. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. You know. It's a four story parking lot. It's certainly not any taller than Target, that's for sure. It's a lot more articulated than, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. than the blind oh, yeah. yeah. Target has great parking. Yeah. <laughs> you park on the roof there? Yeah. Yeah, Fourth of July, it's yeah. a great place to see fireworks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's okay. That's a great like suggestion. Every okay. Um, I have one question. Is there any loading uh, available in the front, or they would have to be pull? They'd have to pull either in the front of the or pull into the building. Um, and how high is the the opening? Well, it's Whatever code yeah, it's, is, uh, it's just uh, eight, six, eight. or nine foot high, so you're not going to get a semi to move in. Yeah, right. there's no so, loading dock, nor is there room for a semi trailer. Yeah, because I noticed that mm -hmm. on the Zenku building, there's like a, a loading stripe, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it, it's able, is activated, we, or is it? We do have a um, corridor in the back of all the retail. So they could conceivably pull in a panel truck and load stuff through the back, and they aren't having to only go through the front. Okay. So that has been provided. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan? Also loading for it's about 12 feet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what about people moving in? You've got 130 units. units. Yeah, that's... You're going to have people moving out almost, even if everyone stays for three years, which is not, you know, you know in, the re in, the, in the Red Bull business, in the rental business, you're lucky if they stay three yeah. years on average. I mean, that means you're having one move out every weekend. Yeah, it, um, yeah. Is there like a, is there a, is there a freight elevator? Or, that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah, it's 11, 11 feet. Is there a freight? So you get yeah. open and, and there's space. That's good. That's that's yeah. important. Yeah. Elevators? Yes. 11 feet. Front you were saying? Yeah. Regular. So I guess for loading, there's two elevators. You know, one that's sort of in the center, and then one, one the lo located more towards the front, the Sepulveda side of the building. So I guess for for loading, it's either going to be from Sepulveda or they'll pull in. To the garage and load from there. Good. So, okay. I have a question. What is the timeline on this project? So from start of construction yeah, is sit from six to eight months from now, perhaps, to get started. Mm -hmm. And then what are we looking at about eighteen to twenty months? Eighteen to twenty months. Okay. So it's like twenty sixteen, I guess? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twenty sixteen. Okay. Um I guess I, there's one more. I have, my, my question is back to, we, we discussed this the other night, is your loading for and, and set up for um, uh, demolition and for construction. Because <coughs> we are very concerned in the neighborhood about how you're going to set up for that. By, there's no other problems, everything goes forward. You, we, don't, we really don't want you in our neighborhood. We don't want you on Halbrand. Right. We want you to stage everything as far as you can somewhere, you know, on the property, build your parking on stage on the property, and then park your construction workers off site. Yeah, I, you know, we talked about that, and I, we're sensitive to that. We're going to shorten the power period of time as much as we can, but you got to remember if if we try to do everything from Sepulveda, that's going to prolong the. Okay, but just of even time. the construction workers and their trucks. Can you rent space from Target? Can you well, rent a, can I mean, you rent a level? Sure. Can, is there, you could probably park like where uh, uh, Kinko's is. There's a lot of parking. Well, there's well, some that's parking there. That's it's for the not really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rent's not Actually, fair to them. This, this I just want uh, I just wanted to, you guys to be yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sensitive we'll to that. Yeah, we'll figure something out in terms of reducing oh, yeah. the amount of worker parking 
on uh, Albert. Yeah. Uh, I think also once the garage gets bicycles. built too, then go. it all goes inside. Sure. And sure. that process is going to take about how long, Gary? It's about four months, four to five months. You know, so, but once that happens, then everybody goes inside. Yeah, the existing buildings will have uh, asbestos 